Let's now open up SignBeats. Whistle in the Grooveboxes folder, and at the bottom, you will find SignBeats too. I'll close out the browser, so let's have a listen to this Groovebox. This machine gives you four channels of sound generators. Three of them are sine waves, and one is a noise generator. Each of the four channels has its own independent sequencer. There's this tone section here for the sine waves where you can control and modulate different aspects of the sound. You can add drive, EQ, and filtering to the sound. All the sine wave channels have identical controls, so if you understand one, you can operate the others. The noise channel is a bit different, which we will look at later on. Down here is a mixer for the four channels. Then you have a master EQ and compressor. A master volume control with level meters for the multiple outputs. A very cool snapshot management feature. And lastly, you also have two return effects. Both are identical in their feature set. They are both delay units with built-in filters and also have their own modulation sequences. Now there's a lot happening here, so let's simplify things. I'm going to start by turning off the snapshots management feature. I'll turn off both the master effects. Turn off both the return effects. Bring down the send dials for the mixer channels. Okay, I'll start with the purple channel. I'll initialize all the modulation. Initialize the sequencer. Next, the teal color channel. Initialize the sequencer and modulation. The yellow channel. Initialize that too. Finally, turn on the noise channel. And initialize it. I'll also turn off the drive and EQ here. Okay, let's start with the yellow sign channel. I'll turn off the effects. Let's add notes into the sequencer. Oh, hang on. I'm adding values to the modulation lane here. So you get two lanes, a yellow modulation lane and a blue trigger lane. The height defines the velocity of the note. All right, now what about the pitch? The top sliders here let you define the pitch of each step. Click and drag to change the MIDI note value. There's this bug where if any note is set to C minus two, it just defaults to the last non C minus two note it encountered. So right now every note is C zero. So just make sure you don't use C minus two for any of the steps. Okay, so we have a sequence now. I'm going to pan this to the center. Set the volume at max. Now we can change the playback speed here. It's all tempo synced values. What's cool is that each channel can have its own playback rate, which can create very interesting interaction between the different channels. Let's talk about these roles. You can click just below a step to assign a role. We're using the blue one here. Let's try yellow. So that has a different role value. You can change the role values by just clicking and dragging. So they're not fixed. I think that's pretty cool how you can change that up. You can change the sequencer's playback direction, kind of like we saw in GoBox. You have a few options here. Okay, let's open up the modulation lane. I'll draw in some values. Now what these values modulate is defined in the tone section. Here, this is the overall release time for the notes. Let's say I set it to a high value. Now with this mod dial below, I can give it a negative modulation depth. So now the release gets shorter whenever it sees a high value in the modulation lane. Or I can do the opposite, where the release is low, 
but the modulation depth is a positive value. Very easy to make dynamic changes to a sound with this kind of modulation options. This glide dial will only work if the step has a purple color below. Click twice to get a purple color. You can right click to remove it completely. Now you hear the glide and with the dial you can set the glide time. It also lights up to let you know it's working. Next, this is the octave transposition dial. Below it is a semitone transpose dial. But you can change it to a fine tune by clicking here. So you get a range of positive 0.5 to negative 0.5. Alright, this is a pitch envelope depth dial. This accentuates the attack of the sound and also gives the sine wave a bit more harmonic content. Below it is the modulation dial for the pitch envelope. So again, this will follow the values entered in the modulation lane. This is the envelope release time and of course the modulation depth dial below. Let's turn on the drive. The drive dial is a very analog sounding overdrive control. The bit dial adds bit crushing, so you can get that very crunchy sound. Let's try the EQ. It's pretty straightforward. Just one frequency control and one gain control. Pretty amazing that we're getting all this from a sine wave source. Next is the filter. Cut off dial. Filter resonance. Below you get the modulation dials for each. You can change the filter to a band pass or a high pass. I'm going to leave it on the low pass. All right. In the next tutorial, we will engage the teal-colored sign channel and explore more of the sequencer controls.